All right. I'm going to give y'all a game. Number one, surefire, never fail way to figure out if someone has a demon. Let's get to the show. Hey, we're going to... Hey, we're just going to get right into it and get into the material. So we're going to start with, yo, a lot of people believe in ghosts and ghouls and spirits, but I need y'all to believe in demons. And this comes from the book of Revelations when it says one third of the angels rebelled against God alongside Satan, the devil, and were kicked out of heaven. And so we have to understand what does it mean for a person to be demon possessed? And what we see in the um, Bible is that demons need a host and a vessel, right? So we, as a living body, can actually house either clean spirits, like the Holy Spirit, which comes from God, or you can um, house unclean spirits like demons and devils. And this comes from the book of Matthew. It says that that as in short a unclean spirit or a demon is casted out it goes and roams wandering to and fro where they may rest or found like a house or a vessel and when they find that no there's nowhere to go they return to their house with seven demons more worse than the first. So you need to know that either you are a carrier of the Holy Spirit or you're a carrier of unclean spirits. Bow. So you need the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus to seal you. All right. So this is you as a person and as a vessel. So how can you spot other people as vessels? Number one, surefire way to spot if someone is demon possessed, give them a direct no. Okay, and you're probably asking like, Winston, why does a direct no matter? It comes from manifestation. And so when it comes to the devil or Satan or Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, um, when he was rebelling against God, his primary sin issues were twofold. Number one, the sin of pride. Boom. And then number two, the sin of rebellion. Right. And so when we, in short, had Adam and Eve um, rebel against God and disobey his commandments, we automatically pow, fell under the authority, the like kind of rule and default of the devil. So our natural makeup is not godly. It's not right. It's not good. It's actually evil. And so that's why the Bible says that you must be born again and you have to be a new creation all right so our flesh and our old man naturally rebels against god rebels against authority and rebels against any lordship in our life right so just a practical example ladies you know when you're talking to a dude um, just in the street or a stranger it's like hey you're so beautiful i want to get your number blah 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 and then if you say something like, oh, I have a boyfriend, it's pretty cordial and it's pretty cool. Boom, right? But when you say a direct no, right? They start to just cuss you out and just say crazy stuff. Why? Because of that dormant, unclean spirit that's in them that just manifests in rebellion against authority. And so we see this, um, and not just in romantic relationships, we also see this in um, our households. Why is in the Ten Commandments, honor thy mother and thy father in there? The only promise, um, a only commandment with a promise attached to it, because that is your spiritual authority in your household, in your family dynamic. So likewise, when we see people rebelling against um, stud um, not students, against teachers, students, that is another hedge of authority. And so a direct no makes every unclean spirit that's in a person have two options like literally two options either you have to submit to the authority and humble yourself just like um humbling ourselves to god 
or you manifest and rebel against God just like Satan, right? So a lot of us are conflict avoidant um, and the spirit of God is power, authority, and dominion. So you can, in short, um, hide and um, keep on a good front when you don't have direct conflict, when you're very passive about things, right? But when you have direct authority and a direct no, you know you have to do? Either you obey or you rebel. And so we see this in the New Testament where it says the spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. So um, the devil being the prince of the air and also the prince of this world already has rule and dominion as the permissive will of God allows him. So um, the Holy Spirit has come to um, rebuke the world in sin, in righteousness, and in judgment. And so he is eternally judged and no unclean thing will enter into the kingdom of God. So you either have to look like God in holiness being reborn or you're automatically, your default, your natural disposition is behaving in the same manner as the devil when it comes to rebellion, the spirit of the antichrist, and um, just going against authority. So our overall message verse um, comes from Romans 10, 9. All those who confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in their uh, with their mouth and believe in their heart that God raised them from the dead, they are saved. So why is that? Everybody wants Jesus as savior. Um, that's easy because that's a yes. Everyone wants to go to heaven. Yes, we want all the benefits. We want all the inheritance. But obedience, submission, and humility is the discerning factor between people that Jesus knows and that he doesn't know. And this is through the power of grace through faith. So that's the only way that we are saved, through his power being in the world. So even though the spirit of the Antichrist is in the world, so is the Holy Spirit available to everybody and all men and women. Um, so you have to know if you yourself do not take authority well, you are under the subjection and also, in short, the kingdom of darkness. And so that's why the Bible says, um, if you want eternal life, you must be reborn. It doesn't say that you have to be a good person, right? It says you have to be a person that is born again. And that's why the New Testament also says, test every spirit if it be of God. And so that's why we see um, even in the church that you have to be discerning of spirits because you see the devil knew the Bible. He knew the word and he also was testing Job in heaven. So there's just principalities, there's authorities, there's rulers and witnesses, um, wicked and spiritual darknesses. And um, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but everything is on a spiritual plane. Everything is about what is happening in the supernatural. So you have to make sure that you are a clean vessel and what opens you up to be a, um, in short, an unclean vessel or um, open you up to the demonic is sin, rebellion, and witchcraft, right? And the Bible says that the sin of rebellion is the spirit of witchcraft. Right. So you have to understand what type of spirit you're operating in and which one you're not, because what you will see with um, unclean spirits like demons, um, that the spirit of witchcraft is also the spirit of manipulation. I'm using spirits into um, interchangeably, but it's just the behavior. So if you tell someone a direct no and then they begin to manipulate the situation again, they cannot take direct authority nor direct conflict. So either they have to submit to your authority, take a no as a no, um, in your workplace, your job, your friend group. Like if you don't say, oh, I'm busy, I can't um, make it or something, something or whatever, they'll just begin to try to shape your emotions, try to just, in short, manipulate you and lie and um, just be aware and discerning of the attributes of the devil um, operating in people, operating um, through demons. So um, just be vigilant, um, look at these um, telltale signs of uh, just 
bad behavior because this will happen in professing Christians who are not Christian at all, but they go to church, but also it happens in the world with people who are not saved because they are rarely available, not receiving the seal of God in full armor, and the, being the armor of light to not be um, demon or demonically influenced by satanic attacks in the supernatural and spiritual. All right, so um, we just wanna make sure that um, we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that we repent of our sins, and that we follow after him. Because the way to um, eternal salvation in the kingdom of God is straight and narrow, and very few find it. But the path to eternal destruction and damnation in hell is wide and broad, and many find it. So, number one, easiest, quickest way to spot a demon-possessed person is a direct no. Direct confrontation and direct conflict results in two things. Number one, godliness. So either submission, humility, and obedience, or number two, rebellion, being the sin of witchcraft. So make sure that you're not opening yourself up to witchcraft by um, being manipulative, lying, or um, just going against authority. But respect every and all authority in your family, your government, in your school, um, because all spiritual authority, even in church, is set up by the ultimate authority, which is God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit being um, Jesus Christ. And make sure you give your life to him. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand and he has come to judge the world, giving us either eternal life or eternal damnation. And that is the gospel of Jesus. And um, that is part one, how to spot a demon possessed person. We're gonna do a part two of um, physical, spiritual um, discernment and manifestation that you will get when it comes to the supernatural gifts. So, hey, thanks for watching. We're done with the show.